Hey everyone, before we get started with this awesome video, I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. These are the rock stars who gave me super thanks on my previous videos, and with your support I'm able to continue with this content, and I really appreciate your contributions. I want to show you one of PowerPoint's best kept secrets, and that is the animation triggers. And I think most people know about animations. You can make things pop up on the screen, or fade in, fade out. But what a lot of people don't realize is that you can have those animations render at the click of a trigger. And by trigger, let's look at this screen right here. I have three triggers right here. One's called brand equity, one's called advertisement, and one's called segmentation. When I click on brand equity, then I have an animation appear on the screen. Now I could just animate this sequentially, but suppose I want to jump from brand equity to a different trigger, such as segmentation. So I'm going to click on this one, and then I have another trigger. Now I'm going to go to advertisement and then this animation triggers, and then I can go back to brand equity. And so it gives me this flexibility of a branching scenario where I can have different interactive elements on my slide, and then I can have triggers set to those so that my presentation doesn't have to be linear or sequential. Let's go back to a more basic example. Here I have three triggers. I have blue, green, and I have red. And I click on this, and then the blue triangle appears. It fades in. When I click on the red trigger, then a red octagon appears. And if I go back to blue, then that red octagon will fade away and the blue triangle will reappear. And then I click on green and then I have a green diamond. Let's pull back the curtain and look at triggers in the most basic form. So I'm gonna start a new slide. It's just gonna be a new blank slide. Let's insert a shape. This will be my trigger. And so in this case, the trigger will be a blue box. And then I'll insert another shape. And the shape could be anything at all. I can have an arrow, maybe I'll draw a green arrow on the screen and then I want to animate this arrow. I want it to fly in from the bottom. So I'm going to go to animations and I'm going to go to either float in or fly in. And so in this case, I want it to come, that's right, from the bottom. I could have it come from the left or I can change the direction, but in this case, I do want it to come in from the bottom. Now by default, it's going to come in when I click the screen, but I'm going to come to the animation pane so that I can see that I want to click that animation, and instead I want that to happen not on the click of my mouse, but on the click of the rectangle. And I'll get even more sophisticated here. I'm going to go to the selections pane from the home ribbon, and I'm going to relabel all of these things. So the rectangle, I'm going to call that the appear trigger. And the arrow is okay. So now when I go to the trigger pane, I want that to be on the trigger of when I click on the appear button. So it's not gonna appear when I click the mouse anywhere on the screen, only when I click on that particular box. Now let's take this a step farther. I'm gonna hold control and shift on the keyboard and just duplicate this box over here. And this box, I want it to be red. So this is going to be enter. And you know, I might even change this to the box will be green, the trigger will be green, and then the arrow will be blue. And then that's because I want green for go, red for stop. So I'm gonna head back over to animations, and now I want this to go off the screen, but I'm not going to select a new animation from this menu because that's gonna replace my initial fly-in. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add animation, and I'm gonna have it fly out. Now I don't want it to fly out in the direction going down, I actually want that to go up. So I want that to keep going off the screen. And then I'm going to set the trigger, so I want that to be on the trigger of, and I have two appear arrows, so I need to go back to the selection pane, and I need to make sure that this one, instead of appear, it's going to be disappear. Now when I go back here, so this will be triggered on the click of the disappear trigger. Okay, now the issue I have when I go into the screen is that the arrow's already there, and when I click on this, it appears, but it started out already appeared, and then when I click on this, it goes away. So I want one more thing, and that's that I want this to actually disappear. I'm gonna add a trigger, disappear, and I want that to disappear, not on click, but with previous. And so that way it's gonna start invisible on the page, and then it's gonna fly in when I click on the green box, it's gonna fly out when I click on the red box. So now let's preview it, and yep, I don't see the arrow, and I can make the arrow appear when I click on the green box, I can make it disappear when I click on the red box. And so once you understand this basic concept that you can have interactive elements on your slide and animations appear only when you interact with them, then you're able to do some pretty sophisticated things. A few months ago, I shared this slide, how to create an interactive quiz. And so these are all interactive elements. They're all triggered. And so when I click on Germany, so the question is, which country consumes the most chocolate per capita? When I click on Germany, it says, no, nope, incorrect, try again. 
and then I can click on maybe America. Incorrect, try again. So now I'm gonna try Switzerland. So I'm gonna click down here and then finally I get the right answer. And it says correct, well done. And in this case, the correct answer stays on the slide. I can still click on these and they're going to appear and then disappear as I click on them. So these are pretty simple animations. I just have a box appear, it flies in on the screen and then it disappears after a certain amount of time. And that happens when I click on this element right here. And then the slide we previewed at the beginning, I have, here's my brand equity. So when I click on that, then I have a connector and I have a box. It's actually three elements right here. I have a shape, which is this rectangle. I have some text and then I have a sticker right here. And I group those all together and then I put a connector and then I'm able to animate the connector and then this group of objects right here. Now let me show you behind the scenes of this particular slide because there's actually a lot of animation that's going on here. For every one of these categories, brand equity, advertisement, segmentation, each one has a connector, each one has a box full of content. And I want all of those connectors and the boxes, so six things, I want them to disappear when we start the slide. And then I want these boxes up here to appear when I start the slide. So those just fade in automatically and all that happens without me having to interact with the slide at all. No mouse clicks at all. And now I want these things to animate. I don't know which box I'm gonna click on first. It could be segmentation, it could be advertisement, but I do know that I want the connector to animate and I want the box to appear. Those are the basic activities that are triggered. The connector is going to wipe down and you can see I have it wiped from the top so that when I click on the box, it looks like it's wiping from the box right here. And at the same time, if I look at the brand equity trigger, when I click brand equity, I want these things to animate, but also if something else is on the screen, either advertisement or segmentation, I want those to fade out. And so I have those fading out at the same time that the connector is fading in, or rather it's wiping in. And then after it wipes in and those other things fade out, then the box wipes in as well. And that way I can have this interaction that I don't know if I'm going to click on segmentation first. And so then when I click on brand equity, either advertisement could be on the screen, segmentation could be on the screen, or nothing could be on the screen. But I want to make sure that all of those things fade out at the same time that this one fades in. And likewise for segmentation, I want the brand equity and advertisement connectors and content boxes to fade out at the same time that my connector is wiping in, followed by my content. So this is all a single PowerPoint slide and all of the interactivity is simple triggers. So trigger animation effects are super powerful and they're just one of the best kept secrets of PowerPoint, I think. If you haven't played around with the morph transition tool, that's also a really sophisticated tool. And I have a tutorial that I'll share with you right here on how to create morph pan and zoom effects. Similar to what you'd see with Ken Burns. It's really fun and give it a try. So click right there to keep exploring with me. Thanks everyone, and until next time. Happy Disney morning!